actually have a bookend for your Emmy collection <gasps> here tonight. No, so I never did. Theater. You're so kind. That's a great question. No, I, of course I never dreamed that. Um, but now there will be bookends, they'll, but they'll be close together. Is that like one of your Hollywood moments and your golden moments of daytime, Matt? The first Emmy? Yes. Oh, my goodness, yes. That was huge. And... I think Shamar Moore was saying tonight when he opened the envelope, he didn't expect to see my name. Neither did I. I mean, history had taught me I am not going up on that stage. It's not my name. And I lived in fear, actually, because after the ninth time I didn't win, um, I would go numb. I never heard my name after that. And I didn't hear my name that night. And so my biggest fear is I would go up one night thinking that it was me, and it wasn't. <laughs> but that night it was. Thank you. You know, one of the first things that went through my mind when I was told I was going to be receiving this award, I was thrilled, of course, and recognized what a tremendous honor. But in recognizing that it was such a tremendous honor, I was also thinking, really? Have I achieved enough in my lifetime to warrant my getting the Lifetime Achievement Award? <laughs> you know, so maybe, maybe we all feel this way. We're our own worst critics. I don't know, but I, I think I, it's hard for me to believe that I have achieved enough. I'll keep on trying. Thank you so much. Thank her for me. Uh, they're, they're, you know, I'm someone who, I thank God for the good writers in this world. And when I see a script that I love, I want to do it. Uh, yeah. On the plane coming here from New York, I wound up of all the movies I could watch. They had a couple of classics in there and one I had never seen um, called Adam's Rib. I must be the only person who hasn't ever seen it. I thought I have seen all the other Hepburn Tracy movies bringing up baby, Pat and Mike, all of that. But I had never seen Adam's Rib. And I just was struck by the, their performances. Their work is so incredible and their chemistry and how good the writing is and how we all think we're so modern right now. And they, the content, would, I think we all, we all should see some of those. And, uh, so when you ask me, is there something I want to do? I want to do something with that kind of writing behind me. My favorite Erica Kane moments. Well, you know, there, there's, there are so many, and there were so many every week. Uh, I was the lucky actress who Agnes told so many of her stories through. Um, on a light note, I loved all the modeling things. I mean, I'm 5'2 on a good day. You know, so for me to have that opportunity, but plus it was so much fun to be on location, um, to, to wear all those beautiful clothes and be, be outside at the Metropolitan Museum and run down that grand staircase, to be at Lincoln Center and twirling at the fountains, to go to the Statue of Liberty and, and shoot and sit on that fountain outside the Plaza Hotel, I still can't look at it without shivering. It was December, I was in the tiniest dress, and I was smiling while the guys were selling chestnuts in two parkas each. <laughs> Some of my best act. Last question, please. This one, she's created back in time. There are four executive producers and head writers in the room. Have any of them come up to you and ask about your availability? And what would you answer? Well, thank you. Thank you for that, Michael. Not tonight, but they have, and... Um, We'll see. I'm very honored. I'm very flattered. I am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. Okay.